Hi all, Melissa Wilson here. I'm the Manure Management Specialist at the University of Minnesota Extension. Hello and my name is Scott Cordes. I'm a research manager with Dr. Wilson's research group. Today we're going to collect a manure sample from a barn that's not being agitated yet. In this case, perhaps you want to get a sample before you want to go apply this fall so that you know what you're dealing with. But usually it's hard to do to get a representative sample. So what we're going to do is use a PVC pipe here. This will extend the whole way to the bottom of the pit for our swine barn that we're sampling. That way we get everything from the top of the manure column to the bottom where there might be some more sludge. And what we have here on the bottom of this PVC pipe is a rubber ball. This rubber ball is then attached to a wire that goes the whole way to the top of the pipe where there's some extra that once you get this down into the pit, you can pull this shut so that, that rubber ball will trap all the manure inside of the PVC pipe. Then you can lift it up out of the pit and empty it out into a bucket, mix it really well and get your sample from there. So let's get started. Why is sampling important? Nutrient content in liquid manure can be quite variable. Here we see three different species, beef, dairy, and swine manure. And we see the median nutrient concentrations as well as the range that you can potentially expect here in Minnesota. From left to right within each manure type, we see total nitrogen content, total phosphorus, and total potassium. And again, the variability really illustrates that it's important for getting samples taken from your own operation in order to better understand what nutrient concentrations you are actually applying to your fields. What equipment do you need? To properly sample liquid manure, you're going to need a bucket or a larger container where you can collect the bulk manure sample. A five gallon bucket is useful because it has high sides that can help reduce some of the splashing when the manure comes shooting out of the pipe. You'll need a ladle or something else to mix the manure with. A ladle is nice because not only can you mix the manure, but you can also use it to help you get manure into a smaller sampling container, which you'll be able to send to a lab. You'll need rubber gloves. And finally, you'll need the sampler. The PVC sampler can be constructed from materials from local stores. Of course, you need the PVC pipe. It has to be long enough to go to the bottom of the pit or whatever area you're sampling from. You need a rubber ball that can fit in the end of the PVC pipe. You need something to connect the ball to the wire. In this case, we have a hook eye bolt. And then you need wire. The wire has to be longer than the PVC pipe, so that way you can have some slack. And it has to be a thick enough gauge that you can not only pull the ball tight against it when you're trying to lift it out of the pit, but it also needs to be stiff enough that you can push the ball back out of the pipe so that you can let the manure out into the bucket when you're ready. Collecting the sample. Before starting, make sure the wire is pulled the whole way through the PVC pipe, but the, the ball is loose so that the PVC pipe is open at the bottom. Make sure to avoid areas in the pit with a sump. These areas tend to collect a lot of sludge that won't necessarily be pumped out and land applied. Once you are ready, lower the PVC pipe into the pit until you reach the bottom. Then pick up the PVC pipe by a few inches. This will allow you to maneuver the ball into the pipe as you're trying to close it, but it'll also avoid sampling some of the sludge that might accumulate that you can't pump out every year. Then you can pull the wire, making sure to pull the rubber ball at the bottom tight, and slowly raise the PVC pipe, making sure to hold that wire tight so the ball doesn't fall out. Once you have the bottom of the PVC pipe held over a bucket, you can use the wire to push the rubber ball back out so that the manure now falls into the bucket. And that is how you collect at least one sample of your manure. We recommend doing at least several samples, probably filling the bucket up to a third of the way or half of the way so that you're making sure you get a lot of that variability that might be occurring in that pit. If you have the opportunity, taking samples from several of the manure ports can help capture some of the variability too. Mix well and collect a subsample. Once you have collected enough samples, you'll want to mix up the manure really well. We like using a ladle dedicated solely for manure sampling purposes to make sure that it's mixed really well, and then you can easily sample it and pour it into a container. 
When taking a subsample to send to the lab, you want to make sure to have at least several cups of material so that they have enough to sample. But you also want to make sure you have enough room in the container for gases to escape, or if you're freezing the manure before sending it to the lab, that you have enough room for the manure to expand as it freezes. In any case, you want to make sure that your container doesn't explode. Prepare the sample and send to a lab. Once your sample is ready, make sure to clean off the outside of the container, label it, and then double bag it. You want to put that in some sort of bag system that can be sealed, so whether it's Ziplocs or whatever it might be, to guard against leaks and spills during shipping. There's nothing the post office hates more than a leaky manure container. When you're ready to send your manure for analysis, you want to choose a lab that participates in the Minnesota Department of Agriculture's manure analysis program, or a lab that is certified by the MDA for manure analysis. These programs help labs ensure that they are giving you precise and accurate nutrient analyses for your manure. For more information, visit our website at extension.umn.edu slash manure. Thank you.